Hey, hey, how's it going? Uh, I was just gonna start by showing off the new pathfinding stuff that I've been working on, which I am super excited about. This has been really fun to work on. Uh, mainly because I don't think I've touched pathfinding since, like, the very beginning of this project. So it was cool to go back to it and pick some stuff up that I really wanted to touch for a long time. Uh, I'm just gonna load up my pathing test level here. This is sort of where I've been testing this stuff out. Yeah, cool. I have all these lines drawing that show me where the actual path nodes are generated. And you'll see that monsters are pretty good at navigating around obstacles now. Uh, they can follow me over the top of this bridge. I can go under the bridge. They should jump down, hopefully. Hey, what are you doing? Oh, yeah, there we go. They should be able to follow me over here. Yeah, just in general, a lot smarter. And uh, instead of doing it, it used to be mainly real time, where monsters would just sort of look at the tiles around them to figure out if they could walk on it, where to go. This is more of a upfront generated process. When the level gets generated after it gets loaded, uh, the pathfinding system just walks through the level and figures out where it can put path nodes down. So uh, ideally, the monster just needs to look at the closest path node to it when you're playing the game to figure out what's nearest and where it can go. It doesn't really need to do any checks after that. Uh, so that part, it should be a little bit slower up front since I have to generate this all, but faster later on because then everything's generated. Yeah, these, these guys doing a good job of following me around. I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. Uh, it gets a little crazy when you get a lot of these bridges next to each other. But it seems to work out okay. Yeah, it's a little better now. There used to be like lines everywhere when I did something like this and I was trying to reduce it down. Uh, this seems a little better now. It gets a little crazy here where it connects to this wall here. I think if that was farther away, it wouldn't look quite as crazy, but yeah. If there, are, if there are obstacles around, then the pathfinding system needs to do a little more work to figure out which nodes actually connect to each other. Ladders. Yeah, I was wondering about that. Uh, right now, monsters do not know how to use ladders at all, but it would be cool if they did know how to use them. Like, we can put a new property on a monster that says, hey, I'm able to climb up a ladder, and uh, maybe they'd be able to follow me up here like that, too. Uh, what I would like it to do, I would like monsters to be able to do everything that the player can do. Uh, like It's not really fair when the player can do something that the monster cannot, which is why I added in this recently. Yeah, come here. Where monsters can break breakables now if they get in the way. So... The player can do that, monsters should be able to do that kind of stuff too. Uh, animations for ladders? I don't know, see that's where it gets tricky in that there's a lot of stuff that'd be cool to do in the engine, but then it makes modding a lot harder, like do we really want people to have to go in and make ladder climbing animations? Like, probably not. Maybe the game's lo-fi enough where we could just cheat and use the regular walking animation and it would look fine. I mean, that's kind of one of the reasons for going for a pixel, pixel art style is that you can cheat a lot more like that. You don't have to be realistic about things. Uh, it's also why we don't do stuff like, like Doom, where you can sneak up behind a monster and see the monster from behind. Drawing all of these monster sprites in different directions would be, would be a lot of work, but... Yeah, it would be fun to at least add in the support for that kind of stuff if people wanted to do it. Uh, I'd like to maybe see that in, if anything else, just so that maybe you could have monster infighting where monsters can fight other monsters. Where'd you go? Like, that kind of stuff could be cool someday. Uh, but for right now, I don't know if it's, if it's really needed. Uh, the other problem with monster infighting is that 
we do a lot of faking right now since the player is the only thing that monsters ever really care about attacking uh the only thing that they need to know is which direction is closer to the player so that's that's like there's no fancy a star pathfinding or anything going on in delver it's really like every couple of frames i run a check that does this decaying flood fill on the path node starting at where the player is and it spreads out this player smell value and then when a monster wants to figure out like the monster's alerted it needs to know where it needs to go to get to the player if they're not close enough already they can just look at the node and see which one has a bigger player smell attached to it and they just need to go in that direction so it's not even really a star uh, I guess in Delver, you really are the center of the universe. That's all anybody ever cares about is how to get to you. Uh, so you can do some tricks like that. It means that we could basically fill up a level with monsters and the pathfinding is not going to slow down because you've already done the pathfinding. You've done it once. It works for everybody. Uh, there, there are some problems with that. Like, like I said, monsters monster infighting that would only it only really work right now if the monsters were really close to each other which might work you could just assume that if a monster damaged another monster they were already close enough where you could just walk towards it and have it work like that but but yeah oh and these red lines here you see the white path nodes are just the easy places to walk but they also know where they can drop down from above which is this red line which is a node where they can drop down, but they can't get back up. Uh, so if you're on the same level, they'll never take any of those red paths. But if you fell down here, then they'd start taking the red paths down from the top. Like that guy just jumped down to follow me. Uh, monsters can't always see you. Uh, monster line of sight is blocked by walls. Uh, and I think they have a range of something like... Like 17 tiles, so basically a room in Delver is what they can see you. And then there's like a little bit of, little bit of stealth going on where if you're, if you're standing in the dark, that number drops down farther where you need to get a lot closer. So I think the minimum range is something like 7 tiles and the max is like 17. Uh, yeah, but I don't know if people notice that in the game so much. Uh, if you If you attack or make noise while a monster can't see you because you're in the dark, then they will get alerted by you. That does bump up that value. So there's like a little bit of stealth going on, but not like thief level or anything. Although, you know, lo-fi dishonored would be awesome someday too. But I would love to make like a thiefy style mod in this, but yeah, all those ideas. So little time. Maybe I want to do a cyberpunk one first. I don't know. I have a lot of ideas. I don't know which one to do. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so is there anything else people would like to see about the pathfinding before I move on? No, oh, I, I could show out how it works. Uh, it's basically that every static mesh that has a size, that has a collision size bigger than 0.4 in one of the directions will get We'll get path nodes attached to it if it's big enough, I believe. Yeah. So 0.4 is the cutoff. So if we made this thing like 0.2, it would not be big enough for the game to consider it being something that it should care about monsters walking on. Uh, but yeah, you bump it up a little bigger, and then all of a sudden the game will start looking at it and deciding, hey, this seems like a good place to start putting path nodes on top of. So these are big enough, they're static meshes. The game will see them, see that they're big enough, put path nodes on top of them, and then connect all the path nodes that are close enough at the end. So now I put those two bridges down, and then this guy should be able to walk over to me and attack me. So yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, I didn't want a system where people would actually have to drop in and like add path nodes manually, that didn't seem very fun. Uh, I guess the pro there could be some issues with this where the game might put path nodes on top of things that it doesn't really make sense to put them on top of, but I really haven't seen that yet. 
so if anybody sees something weird after this update where monsters look like they're trying to climb up stuff that they have no business actually trying to climb up, let me know. Uh, they should honor the step height property too. Like this is too high vertically from the other path nodes where monsters won't even look at it. Uh, or the, yeah, the pathing system will just ignore it. But you should be able to make like staircases out of this stuff and have it work too if there's if there's enough room. Like I think this doesn't work here because you would hit the ceiling. So if I made that ceiling higher, I think it would put a path node up there too. Yeah, so now it'll walk all the way up here. Yeah, manually placing path nodes would just be a whole pain that yeah, I don't really I don't really want to have to worry about that. Ideally since levels in Delver are simple enough, like the game should just do it for players. And that's sort of what I want out of Delver is I put a lot of time into the editor and the other tools to hopefully make it so that people can just pick this up and start making the level. They shouldn't need to know much ahead of time besides like if you click and drag and hit enter, you carve out a room and if you want to put a monster down, you right click and put a monster down and then you have a little area you can play, which like monsters should be able to figure out how to get around that. Uh, compared to like what I've been doing at my day job where we're using Unreal Engine 4 and all of the hoops you have to get through that game to get monsters to navigate where you want monsters net to navigate to, like, I think that's just way more work than I want people to have to be able to go through just to add new areas to the game. Uh, yeah, they're... Dreckinson's asking, how do I enable the pathfinding lines? Also, I noticed I can't use my controller in Delve Reddit. Yeah, uh, I've never added controller support to Delve Reddit, um, mainly because it's never been anything anybody's expressed interest in or ever seemed useful. Like, maybe that would be... Uh, this stuff is out right now on the beta branch on Steam right now. Uh, I shared that out to the modding Discord. So some people have been starting to play with this stuff now. Uh, right now, you can turn on pathfinding mode if you enable this draw debug boxes, which by default, I just switched that out so that it was easier that I didn't have to muck with it. Like usually when you play in the editor, you wouldn't see that stuff like now. It's not going to render these pathfinding lines. But if I run the game with, I think... Well, let me just switch this out. So if I go to what? Blah, blah, blah. No, I'm looking in the wrong spot. Desktop starter. Debug collision. Yeah. So if I start the game with debug collision equal to true, I should see those pathfinding lines. And I should see some other information as well. <laughs> Joshua says he's still in the baby zone. Uh, how is baby zone, by the way? I've seen you pop up a few times on the Discord and stuff lately. Let's see. Hmm, that did not work like I thought it would. What have I done? Oh, debug hyphen collision? Typing is hard, guys. Typing is really hard. <laughs> sleep is a struggle. Sleep is always a struggle. I have a hard enough time getting to sleep as it is. And I just can't turn my brain off some nights. It's, it's a thing. Yeah, couple that, couple something like that with uh, a baby. I'm sure it gets really fun. Let's see, this, should this work? I think this, oh yeah, here we go. So this is with debug collision equal to true. Debug hyphen collision equal to true. It'll show all the path nodes. And I'm also drawing all the collision boxes, which is pretty useful too. 
Uh, since I think there's still issues in the game where some of the monster collision boxes don't really line up well. Like, some of them... Some of them, like... No, not the ghost. Uh, actually, what does the ghost look like? Just, yeah, ghost collision box fits pretty well. That's sort of what you want. You want it bigger than the actual monster. Ah, ghost hits pretty hard. I was not prepared. Delayed sleep phase. Is that... Does that just mean that you're Night Owl? Is that basically what that is? I think I feel like that. I feel like I'm offset by two hours from the rest of the world. Uh, yeah, but some of the monsters... Like, I think the little baby spider actually works pretty well. Where you don't want the collision box too small. Because then you'll never be able to actually hit it when you want to hit it. Uh, but, where was that? I think the eye... Yeah, I was. I noticed this the other day after somebody pointed out the eye collision box is actually a lot lower. Like that should that should be up a little bit. Where right now you'll be aiming at the center of mass, which is the eye. But sometimes you'll just graze the forehead and it won't hit because the collision box is farther down. So there's still some issues there. Uh, so that is something definitely to take care of. Which is why I made this switch for debug collision. Uh, but it's not really something you want to run on. I think I might want to add this to the debug menu, so you can just toggle the stuff on and off easily. Uh, but I don't think it's going to make it in for this update, which I think this this update, with all the pathfinding changes, is out on beta right now, but I haven't seen any issues for it, so I think I can push it out. Uh, Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, just change time zones. That's easy. Just move somewhere. Uh, moving is fun. Moving. Everybody loves to move. Uh, that's why people are like, oh, you live in the Bay Area. It's so expensive. How do you live there? And it's mainly that I found a place to live and I don't want to move anywhere else because moving is harder. So now, now I'm here. And also, it's not that bad here. Bay Area is pretty nice. Uh, considering that the rest of my family is buried underneath snow, and for me it's nice and sunny and warm outside, and we got really good coffee here. Yeah, it's got it's got some amenities. Uh, so let's see. So yeah, that's the new pathfinding system that I wanted to show off. But what I think I actually want to do this time is to continue on with what I was showing off last time, which was custom levels. And custom, I want, instead of just making a static custom level, what I want to show is how to make your own generated level theme. Uh, so that should be fairly straightforward. We, we have a mix in the game of static level pieces that we mix in with more procedural level pieces. Uh, what I'm going to show today is one that's entirely just hand-built level pieces. Let's let's show off how this stuff works right now in the game. Uh, so if you look in the generator folder, you'll see all these different themes here, like cave, sewer, dungeon, cold, undead. Now these are the different areas of, of the game. Uh, dungeon is that first area you go into when you first enter the dungeon. But let's look at this. If you go in there, there's a few files in here. Section.dat should be familiar if you watched last episodes, because we did something similar where we made a new section and added the level that we were making into section.dat, and then that folded that level into the game when it was built. So then you can play the game and actually get to that new level. Uh, but that was just one static level that we just designed and dropped in there. Uh, but really, this is a roguelike, so we should be doing more procedural stuff. And that's where this is. So we have like starts and corners and intersections and try intersection folders in here. And if we just look at one of these, like, if we open up halls and look at this hall 8, you'll see this is one of the hall chunks that can show up in the game. Which, just a, this is just a small piece of a level that can be used when building it. And the rest of them are similar. You'll see that the hallway... This hallway starts on the left side and ends on the right side. 
this one's pretty straightforward. I think if we look at other hallways, like this one, it's it's a little more curvy, but it's still, it starts on one side here in the middle, and it ends on the other side here in the middle. And uh, that's all a hall really needs to know to be a hall, is that there needs to be a way to enter and there needs to be a way to exit. And it doesn't matter what's in this middle area here, as long as you can go from here to there somehow, that's considered a valid hallway. Uh, and we don't really do any checking in the game to make sure that that's okay. Uh, if it's not okay, that's a content issue, which uh, we've run into a few times, but it was easy enough when we didn't have that many of these to just be able to open it up and just eye these out to make sure that they're okay. Uh, but it is something to be aware of where like if this hallway exit was over there instead, then this would not work since you'd, you'd come to the game and it would be like this. There'd be no exit to the next area here. And then people would be going, oh, I'm stuck. There's no way to get to the next area. And filling up your support thread with all of that stuff, which you don't, you don't want that. So yeah, that's, that's all you really need to make a hallway. And if we look at the other pieces, like if we look at a start, let's look at start one. Start one is kind of similar, but it only has one exit. It only has the exit on the west here where it actually connects with the rest of the level. But it does need a stairs up here because that is where the player is going to come from at a start. So the game knows that a start level is where to put when a player is going down. Like, this is going to be the first room that gets generated, and then it's going to make a bunch of hallways and corners and other pieces, and then it's going to be, then there's going to be end rooms that get generated that could have the way to go down. Just basically how all of this stuff lines up. Yeah, and Josh was pointing out that, uh, like, this start room, there's nothing here in the other center areas, but if you did have something like this, where there was just open here, if you had other stuff like this, the game could actually connect these, not not by knowing that it was doing it, but just sort of by happen chance. Like so, you could you could put a hidden stuff in these areas if you wanted to, or you could make areas that are like one way paths where you'd have to come in from the west to go through there, uh, and then they would just add a little bit more randomness into things. Because uh, sometimes, yeah, sometimes the accidental level generation weirdness is fun to see. Now that's some of the fun of making a procedural game is that we can go in and play the game even though that we're de the developers and it'll still be different for us sometimes because we'll see things that we never really intended to see. And if you can make that happen more often than not, then I think that's a good procedural system. So this is a start that has a stairs down and exits. We can see a few more of these. Sort of the same way, you have the stairs down and then you'll have the path out on the side. There is one special case. There is this beginnings folder. And beginnings is a little weird. Uh, it's kind of a transition area. This gets generated on the first floor for this theme. So right here is the beginning for the dungeons where when the dungeons start, on the first floor of the dungeons, you're going to see this. So you'll see these rooms that look like they're the, they're the dungeon entrance rooms. Like this one is kind of a straight up homage to Ultima Underworld. Uh, let's look at a few of these other ones. So yeah, this is how those custom rooms for the, the dungeons get generated, the entrance rooms. But you, these could be used for other themes as well. Like if you were making a custom theme and you had four floors and you wanted the first floor to have a, a special entrance that blended in with the previous theme, you could definitely do stuff like that. Yeah, and you could drop some storytelling stuff in here. This might be a good place to put like a shop or a note introducing the area. You could do a bunch of cool stuff like that. Uh, but let's go ahead and start making our own theme. Uh, let's see, I want to make, 
a new theme. So yeah, I've got my mods folder. I've got the stream mod from last time. It has my stream level in it. And it has this new theme that we started making called stream. And all that has right now is this section.dead. And there's not really much going on in here. Uh, it's saying that there's one floor and then the only level that it can generate is this this non-procedural level. You'll see that generated as false and it has a level file. So what it's going to do is uh, every time it's just going to load up this one level. So if we change this floor to like two or three, then when we played the game, we should just see like three copies of that same level in there, which isn't super interesting. So what we want to do is to make it so that we can put our own level pieces in there and generate our own theme instead. Uh, I've seen a few people make themes that are out on the level, or out on Steam Workshop right now that are pretty neat. There's one uh, German guy made his cool, like, overgrown green temple area. That's, that's pretty cool. Uh, it'd be cool to see more of that. Let's die. Let's skip the tutorial. So what I'm testing here is I just want to see if that level that I made earlier does show up the four times like it should in the game. Oh, Joshua, you don't want to move to Brazil? I, I hear it's fun there. Probably more fun than Greenland. I've heard Greenland, that name's kind of a misnomer. So we've got two dungeon levels. We got the well, and here's our stream area. And then we'll go down, and here's our stream area. And then we'll go down, and here's our stream area. And here's the cave. Yeah, it's a little groundhog's, -y at groundhog's Day at the moment. It's just the same one. So we can see that it's working. It's putting our area in the game. Uh, but it's really boring. So let's make this a little more fun. So what I want to do is let's look at the section dot dat for one of the, for like the dungeon. See what's going on there. Yeah, so you'll see that the dungeon has two floors. It shows up in the beginning because the sort order is pretty low. And then it's using one level template, and then it has a transition level, which is the well. Um, what I think we want to do is to, instead of using this as a level template, we'll probably set this up as a transition level instead. So let's copy this level template, move it over to being the transition level instead. So now when we're leaving our stream area is when we'll see that. And then for level templates, we're going to make them generated. And the theme is going to be stream, since that is the name of the stream folder. Yeah, so if we go back to our mod, mod our mod is called stream, or the mod is called stream mod. Our new theme in generator is called stream. So that's what we need to put in here. So we're going to put stream as the theme so that it, the game knows where to look. We set it to be generated. We don't need a level file name anymore since the game is just going to build this. Uh, and we're going to just change the name so that when this pops up in the game, we'll see it. All right, and let's start making some level pieces. So we're going to need some starts. We're going to need some ends. We need some hallways. We need some intersections. We need some corners, and we're going to need some try intersections. Let's open up the editor and start making some of those. Uh, RGC Dev is asking 
while you're looking at these DAT files, if I want to add something to an already existing DAT from the base game, how do I do that? Uh, it's, yeah, it's basically the same, uh, like, for entities.dat. If you wanted to make your own addition to that, uh, let me back up here. Back, 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 data, entities. And so entities.dat is just a big list of groups and then the entity itself. So if you wanted to add your own entities file, here's my example entities file. What I could do is just like delete all of this. So if I, if I just jumped all the way up here, all the way up and deleted everything. Well, that didn't do what I wanted it to do. I'm going to delete basically everything. Yeah. So if I had, if I had an entities file like this in my mod, uh, what this is going to do, if I change this name, if I did this right now, when the game tries to fold together, it's going to go through every mod and every entities.dat that it would find and fold all the pieces together by looking at the names. And if it saw a name in your new file, that was a name that matched the name of the old file, it would, it would replace the one in the base game with your new one. If the names were different, like if this was spawn blocker one instead of spawn blocker, then they get folded together. And when you looked at the entities list in the editor, you'd see both spawn blocker and spawn blocker one under areas there. Yeah. So that's basically how you would do that. Pretty simple. Uh, if you didn't want the game to use any of the base stuff, what you would do is here in game.dat, you'll see that it has like entity data files and monster data files, item data files, player data files. Don't worry about that. Um, but you could replace this with like entities, my entities, and instead of loading any of the base entity stuff, it would load entities, my entities instead. And that would mean only your stuff in that data file would ever get loaded. Because so the game doesn't know about entity.dat anymore. So it wouldn't even find the one in the base game, which it's just something that you would want to do if you're making something like the boarding party mod where it's all sci-fi based and you don't actually want to pull in any base items like swords into a sci-fi mod. You would want something, you'd want a special entities file just for your mod. Uh, that's basically how you would do a total conversion, but we want to merge in everything with the base game, so we're just going to leave it like that. So let's start making our custom theme. What do we want this to look like? And let's load up one of the existing areas. So if we go back to generator and dungeon, and let's look at a start just to kind of make sure that our directions are fine. Yeah, so a start exits on the west, on the red x-axis. And corners, let's go look at a corner. Corner. Next here on the east and goes to the south. Cool. So let's, I think what we want to do is start with a start. That makes sense. So let's do that. Uh, also, this would be a good time to decide on a size for our levels. By default, um, all of the themes in Delver have 17 by 17 level chunks, but we could make that different if we wanted to. Uh, so I think what I want to do is actually make our pieces 7 by 7 pieces instead, because I think this will be a little easier to start with. 
I'm going seven by seven so that we can put the exits in the middle like this. Uh, if we wanted the levels to be a different size, like we could go eight by eight, but then to get things to line up nicely, you'll see that this red line is in the middle of two tiles right now. So that means that we need to have something like two wide exits to get out from everywhere just to get things to line up and center properly. So I'm gonna stick with an odd size for this level. I think seven by seven. So this is gonna be a really small level theme, but it'll be easy to show off how all this stuff works. Uh, let's see, so I'm gonna put a player start here, I think. Actually, no, this is gonna be this is going to be a stare down. That's right. Because when you start here, whoops, nope. I'm being dyslexic today. This should be a stairs up because we're, this is going to be the beginning. So we came from above and then we're going to be moving down. So let's put some torches here just to light things up. And then if we wanted to, since this is going to be something that's like it's coming down from above, we could just play with that and move some of these up. So it looks like you're starting from a higher area and then coming down. How's that? How's this look? Now we have that. Uh, and let's replace these textures with something a little more fun. What do we get? What do we have? We have all this stuff from the base game. We do have this room theme that never really did get used anywhere in the game, but it would be cool to show off. Uh, it'll be easy to see when we're in our area. Let's do, let's do this green. And then the ceiling will be this cool like cobwebby thing. So this, this is gonna be what our area looks like. Uh, and then maybe the floor could just be this floor in most places. Cool. So everything is gonna look like this. Yeah, remember this stuff? Remember making this, Joshua? Uh, and we're gonna save this out as, uh, this is gonna be, where's my mod folder? My mod folder is here in generator and stream, and then it starts. Uh, it doesn't matter what I name this, it just needs to be unique. So I'm gonna call this one, one.bin. And then next thing I need to do is I'm gonna make a hallway piece. An easy way to make a hallway piece is just delete the stuff that we have. And then now it's a hallway piece. Uh, Drakenson is asking, is there a way to make small outdoor themed areas as generated? Uh, you can kind of do that. Um, like there's no reason why you couldn't just make an outdoor themed area and you can use this, this entity under areas. That's a skybox area where when you walk in this volume, it's going to replace the sky with whatever the sky is in here instead. So if I made this ceiling here, let's go back to T1. Let's make that the skybox. So now you'll see there's no sky there, but then we walk in the middle and, oh, there is a sky because we're in the skybox area. And then we walk out of it and then there's no sky anymore. So if you want to, you can make an outdoor area by doing something like this, where like this could be dirt and grass and then you walk in there and you hit the skybox area and then you have a sky. So let's back up and let's go back to where we were. This is a hallway. We're going to go into hallways and as this is hallway one. Uh, let's make a corner while we're doing this stuff. So this is going to be a corner. Corners go like this. 
starting from east, going to the south. So let's go corners and go one. Uh, I believe a try intersection is the same thing as a corner. Oh no. I do want this guy. Let's put a roof back on this area. That's that's gonna be needed. Um, you too. Boop. All right. This is going to be a try intersection. So that's gonna be try intersection one. And then we'll probably need an intersection right after this. So let's do that. Or did we did we already do one of these? Let's see. Oops, this is a try intersection. I think I saved in the wrong spot. Yeah. Okay. This is actually try intersection. This is going to be intersection. Yeah, the naming the naming of the rooms doesn't really matter. Uh, the only way it would matter would be if you had a mod that was replacing one of the generated rooms from the base game and you wanted to use yours instead, you would name it the same thing. So when the files loaded, it would load yours instead of the base one. But if you, if you gave it a unique name that was never used before, it would just get folded together the same way that everything else does. Uh, and then I think what we need to do now but with the new generate level option, the editor should be easy to quickly check the theme. I don't know if it works like that. I don't know if it knows how to find custom themes yet, but if it does, that would be super cool because then it would be a lot easier to test this stuff out. And then we're going to need an end room. So the end room is going to be a lot like the start room, but it's going to go down instead probably. So let's make a room. And it's going to go down. Same over here. And we just want to show off that you are leaving this area and going somewhere else that's below you. So a good way to do that is just by just by doing this, giving it some sort of verticality. It doesn't even need to be that much. Like this is just fairly minimal. But it'll be enough where you're in the game where it'll feel like you're going down. And then we could put maybe like a little exit alcove here. Oop. Yeah, and then we'll put marker, we'll put a exit location marker there. Just so that the game knows that this is a possible place to put an exit down. You won't see it when you preview it, but when we play, it should make the exit there. Yeah, so let's save this in ends, and we'll save that as ends one. Yeah, and let's see. Can we generate? And uh, no, uh, it looks like the editor only knows about the built-in themes right now, so we won't be able to generate it easily enough. That's too bad. Uh, it would be cool to just load all of that stuff. It probably should be like that. Uh, we found a good feature addition that we should work on. Maybe the next update will have that. Uh, but for now, to test this out, we're gonna have to do this instead. So let's run the game and we'll see how this actually works. Let me go back and look at my section.dat just to see if everything's gonna be wired up. Yeah, so we have a stream area. It's got the level template. It has a theme of stream and it's generated. So this should work. Or not, or not work? No. Floors error. What did I mess up in my section? Oh, you know, you should type numbers in places where it wants there to be number. That's, that's tough. So let's try this again. 
Uh, and that error should have showed up. If you were debugging this locally and you got something like that, that error would pop up. Whoops. Yeah, the game didn't like it since I don't have it focused anymore. But it should show up where you're running it from in... Where would that be? Bloop, bloop, bloop. Oh, error log. Yeah, so you'll see this stuff in the error log. So if you if your mod isn't loading for whatever your reason, go check out the error log. Because it should give you a big stack trace of what's going on. All right, let's try this again now that I fixed it. Let's see. Yeah, how about adding a scroll feature to pages to debug menus so you can see all 1,000 swords? Uh, I don't know how much feature work I want to put in the game to be able to support adding a 1,000 unique items to... Yeah, it's all number weighing after a certain point. There's no reason to scroll through that and actually see. Here we go. Uh, I'm going to die. Because the next time the game generates everything, it should make us new stream levels, and we should see our generated stuff there instead. Let's find out. We'll go down. We start at dungeon 1. Go to dungeon 2. Go to the well. Stream generated area. Here we go. So this is what we just made. Uh, I bet there's going to be a problem, though, now that I think about it. Let's summon a scroll of discern reality and use that so we can see the full map. And you'll see that it generated levels for us, but they don't really connect to each other. Uh, if we go in no clip mode, we'll, we'll be able to fly through and we can fly to the other areas that we generated. They'll be here. Ah, it's very dark. Yeah. So you'll see this now. But they're separated by this huge distance. And that's because the game still thinks that they are 17 by 17 areas. Because we never told... We never told this area that it should be a different size. So it's just using the default size. So if we go look at generator dungeon and look at that section there we should see uh where is that should be a size somewhere do, 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 do. i just saw this the other day where is it hiding info oh it's in a different file so we need an info.dat file that tells this theme use different size chunks. So what we should do, what we can do is we can just we can just copy this one for now. We'll save this one out and use it as our own. Let's back up. Let's go find our mod. Stream mod, generator, stream. We'll save this as info.dat. And then I'm just going to delete everything in here. Everything but the stuff that we need. Now we have chunk tiles, which is going to be 7. Map chunks 4 and map complexity of 5. So now if we rerun the game again, it should actually connect the level pieces to each other. Let's see. We'll go back. And if we go down, it should generate a new area for us. And this didn't quite work, did it? What does it look like this time? Weird.
let's see what it looks like. So if we summon another scroll of discern reality, we can actually look. Aha. Uh -huh. So it did make us a level. That's cool. What it didn't do. Although for some reason it's not rendering at all. That seems bad. So there might be another bug in this resizing that I need to fix, but it looks like it did generate the level okay. Fun. It's fun when you find bugs in a stream because then, then you know that you're live coding everything. Oh yeah, so we did find the area down, so we can go down to the next area. Huh, this area worked fine. This will be fun. Now, now I have a mystery to solve. Yeah, we didn't ship any levels that used anything other than the default size. So there's probably some weird bugs in here that we're going to find. Here we go. Found some arrows. This is pretty boring right now since I didn't actually make... Hmm. Yeah, here's another one of those blank spots. And yeah, maybe we should be making a 17 by 17 area now instead, just to get this stuff to work. That is strange. And I wonder why it thinks this is the exit down. Uh, must be an invalid tile definition there somewhere. But we are generating a level here. So we can walk around. Uh, looks like I forgot to put a ceiling on part of this. So there's some things to fix. Uh, so maybe in the meantime, I could fix some of that stuff. Yeah, and here we go down. Here's our transition area that goes out that has our shop. And then the next level underneath this will be the cave because that's the next one in line. So yeah. So that's basically how that new theme works. Uh, it looks like we might have to use a different size under, other than 7x7 seven seven, though. Maybe right now then we should just change that back to a 17. That's not as fun, but uh, we can do it for now. Yeah, it's probably saying exit dungeon because it thinks it thinks there's it thinks it's an exit tile in there. And that's because in data, data tiles.dat, if we look at that exit tile, one of these is hard coded to be the exit tile. So it's probably looking at that number and seeing it. Uh, I might have painted with that wrong texture once. Or it might have been because I loaded a level that had an exit chunk on it that when I saved it out, it was still in there somewhere and then I was walking by it. Uh, so maybe I should make sure to make new levels in the future too. But for right now, I'm just going to open up. Let's open up mods theme generator stream and let's just start resizing these to be 17 by 17. Oh, well, let's do that. No, that one's big enough. And then we're going to do the same with all the other ones. These aren't terribly interesting right now, but there's no reason that somebody couldn't go ahead and make like a dagger file level theme. Like dagger fall dungeons were generated in a very similar way to this where it had room files that it put together, but there, everything was like a maze. So there'd be like four ways out and everything would connect to everything else. So they'd be like this where even though it's a corner piece, it could still connect somewhere else. So you'd get these weird like spider web branching pathways and you'd have like a bunch of weird room over room stuff going on like this. And yeah, you just get like, you get totally lost after a while. These are gonna be a little more straightforward. 
but we could put like a little room off to the side if we wanted to. That would be cool. Maybe like a little window in here. Yeah, how about that? Like a torch on the wall. Yeah, so we could just start decorating out this theme a little bit. Uh, one thing that you usually want to do, or one thing that we do a lot in the game, is to put lights down where places connect, just so that in the game, you always know where to go. If everything's just pitch black, uh, it's really hard to tell where to go sometimes. But if you leave a breadcrumb of lights down, like this corner is pretty dark, if you leave a breadcrumb of lights down for the player to follow, the player will kind of like a moth walk to the light a lot of the times. Yeah, why are you saying exit dungeon there? I think I want to just delete these tiles to make sure there's nothing hiding there. Now if I walk through... Weird. And there must be a tile hiding somewhere, but I really don't want to find it right now. What I'm doing is just going through and resizing all of this stuff. Level resize. Yeah, and this is a very, this is going to be a very boring theme the way that we're lining all the stuff up. Uh, Ideally, ideally you want to be doing a little something a little more interesting than this. Like, instead of just having four hallways that connect, what you could do is even to make it a little more interesting, make it so that your intersection area has sort of like a central hub path that you need to go through. And this is still... So it's still pretty basic, but at least when you're running through, it's going to give you more options than just, oh, here's a hallway, where do I go? Now you have a lot more stuff going on, and if you wanted to make this even more interesting, you could do stuff like add a central room in here, and then give it like an entrance somewhere. So now you have a lot more options to do whenever you enter in one of these areas. So yeah, so let's do something like this. Yeah, uh, it is nice to have unique landmarks too, otherwise the player is going to be totally lost. They'll have no idea where they actually are, uh, and they're just going to get frustrated and be bored. But if we make stuff like this where they can see into areas but they can't quite get to them yet, and we give them other little paths to try out, maybe, maybe like one-way areas, like there's no reason why this couldn't go up. And then you'd have a path where you can only get to it from one side, but you can't get to it from the other side. Like, there are ways to make some of this stuff a little more interesting. Yeah, so already something like this is more interesting. There's, like, there's ways to get over there, but you can't quite see it yet. You have to walk around sometimes. Yeah. That already feels better. We could put some monsters to fight in here. Monsters are fun. We could put some loot for the player to grab. So that was the intersection. Now we have a try intersection to do. Yeah, you can put furniture down as landmarks. There's a lot of things that you could do just to make things a little more interesting. You can put water features. You can use lava. You can make trap rooms or monster closets. You can do a lot of stuff. You could even do even this area, like this tea is boring, but if all of a sudden there was like a side offshoot for one of these areas, that's already more interesting. Especially if, like what we did earlier, you make it sort of one way where you can see in, but you can't actually get there. Like, Doom does this stuff a lot, where they show you areas that you can't get to right away. Because then it gives the player kind of a goal. 
Like, they'll see in there, but they won't know how to get in there, but they know there's an area there. So they can get back over to it like this. Right now, there's not really a reason to come back here, though. So you could, you could always make it a little more like this. Put some loot in there. Put a monster encounter. And now you have, it's still the same thing. It's still a tri intersection. It still has one exit there and exits on the other sides. But now if you come in this way, you might be tempted to go check out this. Like what's going on over there? There's a light in there. Oh, there's a monster over there. Uh, maybe there's some loot back there. Yeah. That already feels a little better. Cool. So, but this is only one of the sides. We could do the same thing like over here. Just sort of an offshoot. You could put different stuff in there. You can make this go somewhere. And then it's the same way. It still has these connections, but it's giving you little optional paths to explore. That feels, and it feels better than just things being straight and even and everything the same size. You can even use something like this where a place with a really tall ceiling will be another way to just give players their bearings. So like this, if we made one of the hallways really tall, then they'll remember, oh, I came down from the area with the really tall hallway, but I didn't check the area with the short hallway because that looked scary. Let's put some lights down. Just to show people where the exits are. Probably want to put one light here in the middle just to show off where that is. And the same over here. This might be leading the players a little bit too much by the nose, but it's a good place to start at least. Hallway. Hallway is going to be 17 by 17 as well. Uh, the hallway, what do we want to do with this? Maybe we want to go like something more dagger folly with it. Maybe you can see in between the two areas, but you can't really get there yet. Let's let's just haunt the player because that's always fun. Put a light there, put a light over here. Whoops. I want to add a floor down that's a little lower. Ceiling can go down as well. I can copy and paste that over a few times. So that's going to go over here. I think some weird rendering artifacts in the editor too. I'll have to look into that. But now you'll walk through here. You'll see that you want to go that way, but you can't. But you do see this. You don't really want to go there because it's dark and it's going down. But it's your only option, so you'll have to go that way. So what we wanted, we could make this sort of maze around and put some little offshoot rooms there if we wanted to. Something to do. Places to check out. Things to fight. But ideally, it's going to end up connecting to that other area. So this is just going to wind around. Yeah, this is, this is what I remember Daggerfall dungeons being like, which is this weird snaking maze-like paths where you just be lost. And everything looked like everything else, so... It was really hard. They didn't really have a lot of landmarks in that game, so there was never a way to get your bearings. That's going to be way too steep to walk up, but we can make it a little shallower. Actually, let's just flatten these out. We want to make a staircase up here. We'll just start walking these stairs down.
that works out okay. Raise up the ceiling. Shift F will flatten out the ceiling. And we can just sort of do the same thing. How's this? I think that might still be too small, but we could drag that up like that if we wanted to. So now we have a way down. We got this room with something to fight. And then it should connect us back out to the other side. Yeah. So this is a hallway piece where you start on the left and you end on the right, but there's stuff to do. It's a little more interesting. It's not just totally symmetrical. We could even add a little alcove there. We could put loot in there if we wanted to. We could put furniture down. It's a lot of stuff we could do if we wanted to. Yeah, maybe, maybe this is using... We go back to room. Now let's put some let's put some bookcases here or something. Look at that. So that's already a little more interesting. The ceiling can be up a little higher. Yeah, that's cool. We could be using those a little more if we wanted to. Yeah, so now we have some bookcases in here as well. Maybe the player will remember, oh yeah, it's in that area with the bookcase. So they can go check that out. That's the hallway, and then we need to make our updated end file. Let's keep some of those, but let's not keep all of them. Cool. Yeah, so I think this is already coming together a little more than it was before. Uh, usually these end areas are where you want to have kind of your end encounters. I usually want there to be a few monsters to fight before you go down. Otherwise, it's going to be a cakewalk like, oh, there's the stairs down. That was kind of anticlimactic. But if you have to fight in this little arena room to be able to go to the next area, I think that feels a little better. Cool. Yeah, we could light this place up a little better. Just to draw attention to the fact that there is a way down here. Put some loot over here in the corner. How's that? Maybe one torch up here just to sort of show off that there's a way to go. Maybe we'll put that in a little alcove like this instead. That way you won't be able to see the torch, but you'll see the light from the torch. Cool, so we'll walk through here. There's people to fight. Yeah, this is another problem with this area is that these straight hallways are not fun or easy to fight in. You can really only fight things one at a time. If a mage spawns over there, you're kind of screwed. Uh, that's why we, we try to avoid these one tile long hallways. We'll always try to make things at least two by two. And if we can, we want there to be sort of like multiple branching pathways for the player to get around. So you can't really get stuck. It gives you more options in a fight. And maybe if you can add areas that block line of sight, that is also really helpful. That way, if the player runs into a mage or something, it, they're not just gonna be stuck with nothing to do besides like eat the fireball in the face. Yeah. So now we walk in here, there's gonna be monsters there, but we have this like central courtyard to fight around in. There should be a few other paths to get around as well. I think that would be more fun. 
So yeah, now we have this sort of library area to fight in where we have some tall ceilings, we have some low ceilings. We've got some places to branch around and kind of escape the monsters if we want. We have this one way. If we could add stairs to get up, uh, it's usually nice to make it so that if you can get down from an area, you can get back up there as well. But it might be more interesting if if you go down, there's only one way back up, but there might be multiple ways to get back down here. Uh, I think that feels better in some cases. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to... I'm going to really force this to be a one way so that there'll be no other way to get up there. That could be a little taller. Cool. So we have sort of more defined rooms to walk around in and fight in. We put more loot down. There. And I think we can save this. And now we have something that is kind of more like a level. So let's close out and let's give this a test. I'm going to run the game again. Yeah, Daggerfall only had a couple of texture sets. Uh, and the way it used them was weird in that, that dungeons could use different texture sets, but they'd be themed for different areas. So there might be a desert theme and there might be more like a medieval theme, but there were the same textures being applied to the same areas, just sort of texture swapped. So you'd get, there wasn't really, there wasn't really uh, good ways to get your bearings because everything would look the same. Because if you're in, if you're in a cave area, everything would look like a cave. Or if you were in the desert area, everything would look like the desert. So there was never any landmarks to get your bearings on because everything was the same. Let's do that. Yeah, that's another thing that you can do to kind of add landmarks is to mix in other themes. Right now for this theme, we're using a lot of the green walls. We're using a lot of wood floors. But you could switch out the floors in area to be a tiled floor or switch out it so that it's a brick wall. And then it's going to stand out a lot more, especially if that's not the normal theme that people are used to seeing there. Aha, so here we go. Here's our stream area. We'll see we have some lights now. Aha. Uh -huh. Look at this, we have places to explore. Let's look at what we made. Let's go scrolls, discern reality. Cool. Why is it generating it off that weird? <coughs> That's something to look into, but. It looks like we're generating level. Yeah, and we have these really long sidelines right now. And that is also something that you want to watch out for. Because of the way we made these hallways, everything lines up to the grid. And we could basically just fire straight down this hallway. And it'll hit the other side of the map. Uh, not really super fun. Yeah, so let's see. This should be our exit area. Yeah, so this is, uh, this is the basics of making a new theme for Delver. So now we have randomly generated levels that we're making that are going to be in different layouts every time, but they're using our new theme. Yeah, so you'll see this part snakes around. Cool. Let's check out this one as well. Yeah, this one, this one's an interesting one. We made a couple of intersections and then there's some corners. It all kind of snakes around. So there's this middle path. And then it's going to take a left. And then we should be able to follow this to the exit. Uh, one thing we're not seeing right now are any monsters spawning. And I think the problem with that is because it's trying to find stream monsters to put in here. And there are no monsters that have that theme right now. So if I wanted to put monsters in here, 
I would have to do something a little different. What I could do is I could just go ahead and open up this monsters file. And let's do, let's save this out into our mod. Let's go mod, stream mod. And then we're going to need to make a new folder called data. And monsters.dat is going to go into data. All right. So right now this has every theme from the base game, which isn't really what we want. Uh, we want to get rid of everything but the dungeon theme. Yeah. And we would name this stream. Let's save it. So now our mod has this, this monster collection called stream which is the same as our theme that we made. So that's where the monsters be getting pulled, but they'd all be copies of the original dungeon monsters. So that's one way to do that. If you just wanted that, uh, probably a better way to do it. Besides that would be in the levels themselves. Instead of using the monster markers that always pull from the theme of the level, what we could do is put monster spawner entities down instead, where we could set the theme to be whatever we want it to be. So I go mod, stream mod, levels, ah, generator. Let's look at the end level. Yeah, so this one is going to pull from stream, which wasn't making anything because it didn't exist at the time. But if we put entities spawners and a monster spawner down instead, we can have this, like, this monster spawner will always spawn a dungeon thief. Every time. But if we just made this a dungeon spawner instead, it's going to spawn random dungeon monsters there instead. So what we could do is we could just replace all of these monster markers with this one instead. We could just copy and paste it around. And now we'll be getting all dungeon monsters. Or if we wanted to, these could be all undead monsters. And then we'd be fighting skeletons here instead. So that's a way to use different monsters other than the one that the stream's going to have. But let's just keep these like this for now. So I'll save that. And yeah, I, I have to be done for today. I'm running out of time. Uh, thanks for dropping by and watching me make this little little theme for Delver. Uh, if you have any questions, you should hop on our Discord. We've been hanging out there a lot. Uh, it was the unofficial Delver Discord. Now it's the official Delver Community Discord, which is similar, but uh, we've been hanging out there a lot. Uh, it's a great place for modders to hang out and get help. Um, yeah, come find us there if you have any questions. Uh, I'm super happy to help help out anybody making mods. I think, I think this is super fun. I get really excited every time I see what people are making. People making Mega Man mods or like Dark Souls items or Joshua with his thousand different blades that he's making. Uh, super Busy Robot is making a Zelda themed, like almost a total conversion that's not just replacing the textures, it's replacing the items and everything else. That stuff is super cool. And uh, anything that I can do to help you guys out, I will totally do it. Uh, but yeah, I'll, I'm gonna have to end it here for today. I'll probably throw this stuff up on GitHub somewhere just so that people can play around with it. Uh, and uh, I'll see you all next time, probably next Wednesday at this same time. So it's been fun.